Hey guys, we are back for, you guessed it, more Star Wars reviews because the Force Friday stuff just keeps coming. We have got what is probably my most anticipated release from Force Friday. We have got the new Dubak Sand Trooper pack in the Black Series line. Uh, this thing is absolutely enormous, as you can see. Comes in that same kind of standard box that we're used to at this point. We've got some Dubak artwork over here on the side. Our Sand Troopers in the window. It is number four in this particular vehicle type subline. And then the back has a bit of a write up over here, as well as its number again, as well as a bunch of really nice product shots that show off the Dubak in all of its glory. So it's the same box we've come to expect. Nothing too crazy there. I really wish they'd figure a way to show the Dubak rather than just the Trooper, but what are you gonna do? So let's pull them out and take a closer look. All right, guys, so here is our Dubak and the Sand Trooper out of the box. And I gotta say right off the bat, I am absolutely digging everything about this toy from the Trooper itself, not to mention the fact that this toy is absolutely enormous. Uh, from the nose to the tail, you're looking at about 14-ish inches on this guy. He's about six inches tall on his own, and with the Trooper sitting on him, you've got about a 10-inch tall overall display piece here. So there's just a lot going on with this in terms of the amount of plastic that we've got, and this is just an awesome looking toy and we'll go into why I'm saying that. So what we'll do is we'll talk about uh, the Trooper first just to get him out of the way because let's be honest the main meat of this review is definitely the Dubak. We've seen this Sand Trooper before but he is a little bit different so let's pull him off that saddle and take a look at him first. All right guys so here is our Trooper along with the other Sand Troopers that we've gotten in the Black Series. We've got our White Pauldron, our Black Pauldron, and we've got our Orange Pauldron. This guy right here is our new Trooper, and I figured I'd bring these other guys in just to show uh, the similarities and differences, because for the most part, it's basically the same figure. I mean, we've seen this before. We have, we've all seen Troopers and Sand Troopers come and go in this line, but this guy is a little different in some subtle ways, and then in one relatively big way for the most part, kind of to differentiate him. So the big thing is obviously these are sand troopers. They've all got a little bit of uh, dirtiness going on and they're all different in how they're dirty. You know, this guy's got a really dirty helmet. This guy is the most clean, I suppose. This guy's ultimately just dirty all over in a very light way. And then this guy is dirty in very specific ways. There's a lot on the ankles. There's a lot on the thighs. There's a big spot on the chest. And then there is a bunch on the front of the helmet. So they're all similar, but they are different at the same time in terms of how the sand dirt is applied to the armor. There's other small things that are different as well. Uh, the little buttons on the patch here, they are not painted on the new trooper, but they're painted on the other ones. Uh, we've got different helmet coloration in terms of the little paint applications on the figure. Some have lines in them, some don't, some have gray, some have blue. This guy has the new guy has gray with black lines in them, which is different from all of the other ones. All the others have uh, blue on the inside of their helmets. So it's just little things like that that make them slightly different, but they are all ultimately the exact same figure at their core. And then the big difference for this guy is his pauldron. Uh, he has a gray pauldron that has dirt all over it. So all the other troopers have their own individualized pauldrons, which signify a rank but none of them are dirty. This guy has a gray pauldron, which is dirty. The one thing I don't know is what a gray pauldron means. All the other ones have a rank signification. I wasn't able to find that gray meant anything. And then there is a slight difference on the backpacks on these figures outside of them being uh, all the same backpacks in terms of the sculpt and everything. There is a little bit of paint on all the other ones that is missing on the new one. And then the other thing that we would talk about in terms of this figure, because I'm not really going to go into articulation or anything like that. We've all seen Troopers. We know how they work. That's not the focus of this review. It's a it's an accessory as far as I'm concerned. But he does come with the same blaster that you see uh, here and here. He's got the heavy blaster here. It has no paint on it, though. Uh, the others have kind of a patina on it. It's got wear and tear, silver dry brushing. This guy is just, uh, it's brand new. He's just been issued this gun here, which I'm fine with. I don't really care. I never intend to use Use this gun. Uh, he's always going to be holding his new weapon. That new weapon being this 
pike type uh, accessory that he comes with here. You can see it's really, really long. It's about uh, eight or nine inches long. It's just cast in black plastic. It's got very minimal sculpted detail. I'm not sure if it's actually a weapon or more of something he uses to maybe prod the dewback itself. Uh, maybe some sort of taser type thing. I did find some indications that this is kind of a, a prod of some kind, but I couldn't find an official name. It's not something that I've ever heard of as being named before. It's a Star Wars thing. It's got a name somewhere. I just don't know what it is. So beyond that, that's this is kind of the thing that I'm always going to have him holding. Uh, I think it goes perfectly well with the idea of this trooper being on the dewback. So he's going to always going to be using this, and I'm never going to have him holding this gun. But he can hold it just fine in both hands if you so choose. Uh, the other troopers do as well, as you just saw. But I do dig the fact that we have this trooper. I like that he is, is different in subtle ways. I'd be very unhappy if he was just a carbon copy of a different trooper. I really wish I knew why he had a gray pauldron, though. Uh, other than that, I think he's fine. My only real gripe on this trooper is that, as with all sand troopers, I have the hardest time, personally, with these backpacks. They always want to fall out. They do make them back heavy, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but as you can see, it's actually held on really, really well during this review. Thank you for that little guy. Uh, but beyond that, I think it's a good figure, so let's just move him out of the way until we bring him back in and set him on that saddle and talk about this dewback. And here it is, the main event, the dewback itself. So we're going to talk about articulation first, uh, because it is kind of an unruly beast for me to film and uh, manipulate at the same time. So we're going to knock that out first, get it out of the way, and then we will go over the finer points of this space lizard. So we have got quite a bit more articulation than I had originally expected. It is somewhat limited in some places, but in others it really uh, packs a lot more than you might expect. So I'm going to start with what's most important to me, and that is the head. And that's because of kind of the extra, the extra added bonus articulation they decided to add in. So the head seems to be on a big ball joint, and it can rotate, but the, uh, the I guess what is it, whatever this is called, the bit that uh, attaches to the mouth will stop it from moving because the plastic just starts to stretch. So you can see that the head can rotate quite a bit. It has some up and some down. The jaw is hinged. Pop that baby open. The tongue has articulation, so that's the the bonus thing. You've got that tongue that can move in and out up there, which I think is fantastic. I think that's really great. It adds another dimension to this character, so you can you know put the tongue down in the mouth, or you can pull it back up and have it just you know sitting right there. I think it looks great. It's a really cool added bonus. Uh, it doesn't really have any side to side rocker action. It is there a little bit but you've really got to push it and make it do that. Um, the tail is also articulated. It is, I think it's on a ball joint as well. I haven't pulled anything apart, but it certainly feels like it, especially based on the way it acts. So it can go down, it can go up, and it can go side to side quite a bit. Far more than I had originally thought when I was playing around with it when I pulled it out of the box the, for the first time. Uh, once you start moving things, they seem to work a little better. And then the bigger areas is you know focusing on the legs here because they have the most joints they've got the most articulation my favorite part is still that tongue though but the back legs can swivel they don't have any any other motion other than this uh, I honestly I think if you could do a lot more with them it, it would make it far more difficult to keep this thing stable uh, and it can be kind of tricky at times to begin with we've got rotation at this uh, back joint here we've got a hinge as well and some of the joints on this guy are pretty tight. I've seen um, I've seen that on a lot of parts of this figure. It doesn't really seem to be a hindrance or anything. It's just, you know, working those joints out. We've got hinges at the actual ankle as well. The toes are articulated with a downward hinge. And then he's got kind of like a dew claw almost, like on a, you know, a dog has a dew claw. Um, like a toe, basically, is what it would be. And that's articulated as well. I'm honestly not sure why. I don't really see any purpose to it. If anything, it adds maybe an unnecessary joint. I would think it would just need to be sculpted on. It might add to stability as well. I'm sure there's someone smarter than smarter than I that figured out why that needed to be that way. We've got the front legs, which have a more articulation than the back. So these guys uh, are hinged and they rotate. You might have to work them out a little bit more, but you can see that's kind of how they'll come in the box is kind of flush up and down, pull them out, and they can go pretty wide. So you can maybe kind of have him uh, hunkering down, kind of, you know, posturing or something like that. But pull them out and they'll be they'll hinge there and then they rotate. We've got rotation on uh, this joint here, same with the back legs. They're also hinged. 
So they're still, again, really tight. We've got rotation down here at the ankle. We've got more hinges. We've got that dew claw, and we've got more toe articulation on the forward claws as well. I think overall the articulation on this guy works really, really well. Uh, he has a lot of joints that I'm sure many people are surprised about with how well he moves, how far he can move, how much you can do with him. That's not to say he's perfect. He does have his limitations. You've got joints that won't move as far as you think in some cases, but I think ultimately it has to be this way because of issues with joints on the legs like this, where if they're just too loose, he's going to fall flat on his face. You're not going to be able to keep him up. So I'm okay with this kind of happy medium where you do have a lot of joints, a lot of articulation that only moves so far to the point where he is stable and something that is ultimately quite heavy can stand up and support its own weight as well as a figure. Now as far as the overall look and feel of this particular toy, I am about as happy with it as I can be. It does, like I said, have some, you know, wonky articulation here and there, but it is loaded with articulation, so I can forgive that. Where this thing excels is in its look, its feel, and its size. It is, like I mentioned, about uh, 14 inches long. It is relatively big. Uh, it's actually, you know, a lot of these things about this toy really surprised me because I didn't pay too much attention to a lot of the details before actually having it in hand. It's a lot bigger than I expected. Uh, I should have known. I don't know why I didn't, but it's a lot bigger than I expected. There's a ton of sculpted detail all over this guy. Scales all over of varying types, too. You've got a lot of these smaller scales that kind of look uh, feathery almost in how they're patterned on. We've got larger scales on the head that run into the ridges on the back, which have kind of a fur look to them almost. The tongue itself has sculpted detail all in it to give it the craggy rock look that goes with this thing. It looks uh, very much like something that gets used quite a bit. Uh, we've got, you know, very much a lizard looking tongue inside this mouth. We've got those sculpted teeth. We've got this scope, sculpted uh, claws on these legs. Everything about this particular creature comes through very, very well in this toy. Uh, the eyes, the nose, the ridges that run along the head very, very much don't look uh, lifelike. That's definitely not the way to say it, but they look convincingly real. You know, they look very much like this is a large, somewhat docile lizard that you can ride. That's basically what it comes down to. This looks uh, exactly like what I expect a dewback to look like, and I think they've done a really good job translating that into a large sculpted piece of plastic. Uh, one area that I haven't really touched on yet is all of the, the reins and the saddle and the bridle and all that stuff that fits onto the dewback. So the saddle itself, the piece on the top here, is a separate piece. And when you get this guy out of the box, he's going to have a hum humongous hole in his back and you have to force this guy in there. Uh, I actually had a little bit of a tough time getting it in. It, uh, it just took a lot more effort than I had expected, but once it's in, it's in. I don't honestly know if it's gonna have a good time coming out again, so I'm not gonna try. We've got the reins that are sculpted onto the sides of the head that run to the bridle that runs around. We've got the harness that goes all the way down through the bottom there. You can see it. So that's all sculpted onto the dewback itself. But we've got these pouches. We've got the rucksack. Uh, the one thing that I don't really like, and I wish they could have added this, is maybe, maybe one little clip or something to store the rifle that the trooper comes with. Because he's never going to be holding that gun. He's always going to be holding the pike. So I wish I'd have a better place to store that. I'm sure I'll figure out something to do with it. But I wish it had a specific home. That's that's neither here nor there, but I uh, have a thing for that, as you might have come to learn by now. As far as the paint on this thing goes, I think they have done, again, an exceptional job with it. We've got a lot of shading all over the, this lizard here. We've got different color paints on the tongue. We've got the teeth are painted. We have got the different color, uh, kind of dark olive green for the claws. We've got this light tan color on the bottom that bleeds into light green going up, that bleeds into a darker green, which bleeds into a more brown, olivey kind of green. Uh, everything has a bit of a wash as you get into the top of the dewback. There's a bit of a brown wash on the top of him. You've got the multicolored eyes. And then, of course, we do have a lot of paintwork within the saddle itself. It's obviously cast in a certain color, but then we've got the brushing that's done in the lighter brown on the packs. We've got the detail paint on the rucksack, and then some of the latches are painted as well, along with the rest of the reins and the, the bridle equipment. So I think in general, where this guy really excels again is his overall look and his feel, and it just 
oozes that look of, okay, I know what a do-back looks like in my mind and what I've seen on camera, but what is it supposed to be as a toy? And I think this guy exemplifies what I wanted out of this enormous space lizard. And then, of course, we have to talk about how this all comes together as a package, and I think ultimately, with the trooper on his back, you have a complete set here. He does fit on it surprisingly well, too. It's not 100% perfect. He could sit on it a little better if his legs moved slightly different. But you're not gonna you're not gonna be nitpicking about stuff like that. I'm sure uh, it sits on there just fine. The legs convincingly look like he is seated on the saddle pretty well. They fit behind these pouches just fine, and then you can put one hand on the reins, or both if you so chose, and then you can give him the pike if you want to do that as well. Again, I wish there was a, a little bit of a home for this guy here, but we'll maybe, you know, wedge it under there, or, or stick it right there, or do something with it. We'll put it somewhere, but I think he looks pretty nice atop his uh, dewback, and this is exactly the look that that I expect to see, and I'm really, again, taken aback by just how well they have pulled off this entire package. And just for the sake of comparison, because, you know, why not? Let's do it. We have got the Power of the Force era do-back with Sand Trooper with a gray pauldron as well, so there's something behind it, and our new Black Series. And up until now, honestly, this has been a pretty solid do-back. I think it looks great, even though the design is slightly different. You know, the do-back has gone through some revisions over time. I think this is a pretty solid uh, figure. This is just on a level all its own. Obviously, you can't compare the two, and I'm not really. The only thing this guy has going for him, in addition to just looking cool on his own, is he has a moving head when you pull the tail. How cool is that? So yeah, we've got a nice uh, little pair overall. So at the end of the day, I think it's pretty obvious how I feel about this. I absolutely love the do-back. I think it's painted very well. I think it's sculpted very well. I think it has great articulation. And overall, it absolutely looks like a do-back should. I think this is what I think of when I think of a do-back, and we've got it in figure form. The trooper is really just icing on the already delicious cake, and it's an exceptional figure as well. They've done a very good job with this new sand trooper. It's the same thing we've seen before with just some slight variations, and I do dig the the new uh, pike staff weapon that he has, or whatever it's supposed to be. Uh, I do think that this guy is also worth the $60 price tag. You know, I, I think maybe the speeders have been a little bit overpriced. I think this guy is exactly what the $60 price point should be. It's a large, hulking beast with a great figure on top of it. Everybody loves getting troopers, and having one with a great beast slash vehicle only sweetens the deal even more. So, you know, there's a good chance I'm gonna have two of these in my collection. I would urge people to get this. I don't think you should wait for this to drop in price. I think it's worthy of full price. Hasbro has done an exceptional job here. So that's gonna do it for this look at the Star Wars Black Series Do Back with Sand Trooper from Hasbro. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.